Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel, and today is episode 18 of AFC Gregs, but more importantly, it is episode 1 of the new season, season 3. If you missed last episode, it was a fantastic episode, click the uh, link in the card up above, and you'll be able to see the video from last time, and if you want to go down into the description, if you've never seen a Gregs episode before, and you want to watch the whole thing from the start, there's a playlist down in the description, there's about well, 17 other videos of AFC Greg's for you to catch up on. That's a decent amount of content for you to like. We do three videos a week here. So if you do like the video and you enjoy it, please drop a subscription on the channel if you like. It would really help me out. And also it means that you can see when I post every single Greg's episode so that you never miss one if you don't want to. I also do football content and more stuff is coming to the channel very shortly, hopefully. Fingers crossed. But for now, let's start Season 3, shall we? We've had a decent transfer window. I'm not sure if it's brilliant or not. But uh, let's get into the video and find out what you think of our pre-season and the transfers that we have made. Roll the intro. <laughs> So we start today's episode in a place that we don't normally go, the finances tab. And as you can see, we're doing pretty darn well. We're on £3.8 million and there was a couple of reasons for that. And also that has obviously triggered a couple of things to happen for us going down the line for the future of the club and things like that. So basically, once the season ended and the game ticked over to the next season, so after the, the 30th of June, we then managed to look at some of our clauses. And as you can see, a couple of the clauses, like Nasri, for example, 311k I can sell that clause for. Now, Innocent Ngomorakitsa had a clause on there which I have cashed in because it was cashed in for £2.9 million. It was a 50% clause. I'll bring it up on screen if I remember. Uh, it should be up on the screen now. Uh, it was a 50% sell-on fee clause. And basically that was something that I put into the contract. Other teams were bidding on him. Other teams were getting accepted offers of 11 k Fulham came in with a bid that was allowed to be changed. So I said, please have this 50% fee. And also I want 1125 k but, you know, they could have him for, I think, 8k up front or something along those lines. That was the deal that we did with Fulham. I negotiated a little bit extra. It's got us 2.93 million pounds. And there was one for Michael Taylor, but apparently we can't cash that out anymore, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, 20% of his next fee will be owned to AFC Greggs. Uh, there's a couple more we could cash out, but I'm going to leave them for now. For example, Owen James, £1.18 million we could cash in from Fulham right now. Chain, um, you know what, I'm going to cash it in. I'm going to cash it in now. We'll take the money now. We'll take the money now. And Nasri, I think we can get more for Nasri. Nasri is 15%, uh, which means we only need, you know, a couple of million pounds. And we'll get more than that, so we won't cash out on that one. So once we got that money in, I basically went up to the board and I said, you know what, we've got enough money now. We should probably be a professional club. And the board said yes. So next year, uh, the 21st of June next year, AFC Greggs will become a professional football team, which is huge news for us because it means we can sign better contracts. We can progress well in the future. It sets us up really nicely for the future. Now, let's look at the team and the transfers that we have done so far. Most of our transfers were done before we got the money. So I've not really spent that much. There was one player that I accidentally spent £95,000 on because of a um, compensation fee. Didn't realise I was going to have to pay that. Dumb. Should have looked at it better. But uh, yeah, we signed him anyway. And uh, we will look at our transfer history. So, apparently, we've only signed six players. That's not true. We've signed a few from last season. In fact, let's start with last season. Obviously, there's loads of players here. But we'll find where we started from. Which I think is Chris McCann is the first player. So, these are the players that we have signed uh, ready for next season and then the players that you saw on the other tab 
So, Chris McCann uh, is a 35-year-old central midfielder with some very good stats. He is declining. He's dropped down the leagues. He's a former Shamrock Rovers, Oldham. You know, he's played in America. He's played for Wigan, Burnley. He's got a not decent pedigree for his uh, stats. And uh, let's just take a quick look at him. He's going to be playing as like a central midfielder, maybe a ball-winning midfielder, deep-lying, playmaker kind of role for us. He's got the stats to back it up. Obviously, not the strength and the stamina and the pace that we would like to see further up the field. But I'm okay with someone just to sit still as a pivot point and ping the ball around. A bit like Perkins did for us in the lower half of last season. That's what we're trying to get from Chris McCann. Uh, Adam Porter, who we've signed a 20-year-old midfielder from Spennymore or from Stoke originally. Uh, he is nowhere near as good as the scouts recommended him. He's still 20. He's still young. He's growing. I imagine what we'll probably do is we will bend him into the team slowly. He, again, will be a substitute. Kyle Crossley is a right winger with a lot of pace and potentially a decent amount of potential to get into that first team at some point. Again, another backup. We started off with backups. Most of the players that we signed for free, especially, we signed as backups. Mark Howard is a goalkeeper who initially wanted to be our first choice goalkeeper but we've since signed better goalkeepers so now he is not only loan listed uh, he is also not going to be that player former scunthorpe former salford blackpool bolton sheffield united blackpool uh, aberdeen st mirren swansea arsenal originally but uh yeah mark howard joins us from all of those teams on a free lou bradbury however is a midfielder who we will be playing in our first team. He is a much improvement as an advanced playmaker, although we'll probably play him as a deep line playmaker and allow him to roam a little bit, maybe even a roaming playmaker uh, in that central midfield position. He is directly from Leeds, 18 years old. But uh, Lou Bradbury is someone with some very decent stats. I'm, I'm liking the uh, the physical stats. I'm liking the teamwork work rate, passing technique. 16 technique is crazy. You love to see all those good stats. He is going to be useful for us this season. And he's only 18, so he's going to improve as well. Uh, Zach Hemming is the goalkeeper who is the improvement. Uh, he is unfortunately not as good as Langley, who we had last season. However, Langley refused to sign a deal. Both Fitzsimmons and Langley are now free agents. They didn't want to sign for us. We've lost up. He was a talisman goalkeeper. He really was. I'm going to still try and sign him if no one picks him up. But um, yeah, Langley unfortunately wouldn't sign for us. We've signed Zach Hemming, 22 years old. He's got potential. Hopefully he can grow a little bit. He's good for this league. He's not leading. He's not poor. You know, he's he's a mid-range goalkeeper. Hopefully our defence will prove to him that he's good. Uh, next up, we have Neo Eccleston. Uh, he is a right back, a right back uh, substitute he's going to be. Uh, we're probably going to have him as backup for Teddy Jarvis, the youth player who we got last season, who's a right back. He can play right wing back as well. I'll probably just stick to him as a right back. He's, he's basically just a, a very good backup with some good potential. 18 years old as well. Uh, when Claxton inevitably goes probably pretty soon, he will then fill in that slot. So we've actually got three right backs at the moment. Uh, Lexus Beeden is a centre-back who has some very decent stats in certain areas and then some not so good stats in other areas. I'm not sure about him. My scouts think I should play him every game. I'm looking at his stats and thinking he's good, but is he that good? Six foot three, he's very heavy, he's a bit of a bulk. 16 strength, love that. Uh, 14 stamina, 12 pace and 11 acceleration for someone who's six foot three with 16 strength. That's really good. And the teamwork work rate, tackling and marking is all very good. You know, heading, brilliant, could be good from corners. He is right only, which means he goes into Malokwu's position. And there's where I'm not sure whether I want him in that position. Do I want six foot five Malokwu, who wins headers from corners, wins headers all the time? Or do I want six foot three guy who might be a bit stronger, but he's slower? And he is slower than Malokwu. So there's my dilemma there, I suppose. He... I'm not sure. At the moment, he's sub, but he may end up in the first team. 22 years old. Who knows? Chris Moore is next. He is a free agent. He's a centre-back as well. He is more of a backup. I actually think I agreed his contract before I agreed uh, Lexus's contract. So he's not as good this this guy's definitely a sub i might even loan him out um he's not ready yet and finally in this section we have matty downing who is a left back a very good replacement for matty waters when he gets out injured or he can't play i imagine he will do fairly well for us we managed to sign him on a fringe player contract which is great teamwork work rate very good very good physical stats he can cross he can dribble 
we're fine with it. He, he's he's decent. He's very decent. And uh, another former Leeds player was at Bradford Park Avenue last season. So let's move into the new season. And we have signed. This is the guy that we signed for money. Hayden Purves. Not the best name. Probably changed that name to something slightly better. But <laughs> we'll leave it for now. Uh, he is a right winger and left inside forward backup that we have. Right footed. So I'll probably play him in the left inside forward role. Um, he is not great then for now, but he's 19 years old, five star potential, um, obviously don't take too much notice of that uh, usually, but uh, when you're in this lower league, a lot of players are five star potential. This guy in particular looks very good though, I'd like his finishing to improve. Finishing and composure, both of five, I need that to be better, everything else is okay. He's come in and done some pretty good pre-season performances and we'll get into pre-season in just a little bit. He's got one goal and two assists in three games, not bad. Uh, then we have Omar Damba, who is our new striker. Damba is the guy hopefully scoring the goals. This is a position that I have really, really struggled with signing players because what I need in that position is someone who can finish, someone with good first touch and someone with pace. But to get someone also with strength, also with, you know, determination, good composure, uh, dribbling, agility, that kind of thing has been very difficult. And as a result, you always have to sacrifice one of the stats. So technique is kind of the one that I've sacrificed for him here. I would like him really, let's, let's put him in his advanced forward role and also work rate i'd like him to be so much better at work rate teamwork means he's never going to pass in the penalty area so we're never going to have a like sweat across the goal but he has scored three goals in four appearances in pre-season he's got decent pace he's just a slight upgrade on Maguire. very slight upgrade i am still looking for a striker who is good in this position but we are at the first game now so i can't really delay this any longer uh, we also signed Tyrese Dice, uh, who is a winger. Left winger, decent pace and acceleration, decent crossing, decent grib dribbling, uh, good off the ball. His work rate, passing and technique, not good enough, really. Probably a substitute. But 21 years old, good potential ability. So you never know. He's from West Brom and uh, a couple of teams were in for him, actually. So you never know. He might be understudy on the right side as well. We're actually, are we training him? No, we're not training him inside forward right. We probably should, even though his finishing composure is terrible. Then we have Emmanuel de Sarayruvwe. De Sarayruvwe. De Sarayruvwe? Emmanuel de Sarayruvwe. Ay, ay, ay. Emmanuel de Sarayruvwe. Ay, ay, ay. And basically, this is our Josh Ayinsan uh, replacement. The scouts don't rate him at all, but his stats are way better than Josh Ayinsan. Six foot five, good strength, good balance, good jumping reach, decent heading, finishing is fine, um, teamwork very good, work rate good, penalty taking good. We're fine with that. I'll probably try and improve his passing if I can, but to be honest, he's 27 years old. He's not getting any younger. I imagine he will probably start for no it'll probably be sub for now we'll probably stick with the insan just because it's the first game of the season but he is the guy we are looking to replace him because if you look at Yinsan's stats in comparison he's nowhere near uh then we also have a very similar player in a very similar position olu akin sayan uh, sanye olu akin sanye akin sanya akin sanya like akin fenwa but akin sanya okay olu akin sanya <laughs> we have also signed six foot three much better heading, good jumping reach, good strength, no pace at all, good finishing, good first touch, teamwork and work rate aren't there, penalty taking, you know, bravery, that kind of thing is there. Determination 15, again, very similar in the fact that he needs better stats in teamwork and work rate and things like that. Probably won't play for us this season. I signed him just before I signed uh, Disa Revway. It's going to be a challenge for me commentating this year, basically, is what I'm telling you. And finally, we have Harry Tyra who is another goalkeeper who he signed with a little bit more potential, but not as much as I thought. He's from Everton. He was a free agent. I basically went through every single player who was released. And if they are released from League One or above, I tried to sign them. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much what happened. We couldn't get everyone. In fact, we barely got anyone. There was a lot of players who I wanted who were stolen or taken away by a team in the league above or a team in our league because we we're at like very middling reputation. So those are the players that we have got and this is the tactic for today's game. 
Hemming in goal, the new goalkeeper. Hopefully he can do just as good a job as Langley last season. We're going to start with Waters, Jameson and Malokwu, the original partnership from last season. Jarvis, the right-back youth player, is going to play at right-back. We then have a new partnership in midfield of McCann and Bradbury. That is the 35-year-old uh, chap and uh, Lou Bradbury, the seven, uh, 18 year old now, 18 year old, six foot two player who I am pretty excited about. I think Lou Bradbury is going to be really important for us this season. Uh, I may even switch him to a roaming playmaker. Oh, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like the roaming playmaker role, even though his stats do pretty well for them. Uh, Moore is going to be starting on the right. Greg Moore, of course, the youth player with the most potential. No one's come in for him yet, and he isn't wanted yet. Um, I imagine as soon as he turns 17, people will be in for him. Uh, then we are starting McGowan, who probably wasn't my first choice to start left wing this season, but he's suddenly very good, and he has been doing excellently in pre-season. He got seven goals in nine games in pre-season. So um, we're going to play him. We're going to play him on that left-sided uh, inside forward, and hopefully he can cut in on his right foot and do some damage from there. Damber now plays up front. He's done pretty well in pre-season. Hopefully he can continue. Sheffield Wednesday fans, you might recognise him. I don't know if you do. Uh, and then we're going to start with Josh Ayinsan up front. And you can kind of see what I mean about his uh, stats not being there compared to the other players. Like, literally only five stats in double figures. It's not great, is it, really? But, um, yeah, he, he's not going to leave or anything anytime soon. And then on the bench, we have Eccleston, the right back. Uh, we have Beedon, the De the very decent centre-back, who I may switch in and out for, Malokwu. We have Adam Bale, who potentially will come in for McCann. I can't, I can't imagine McCann can finish that many games himself. And then we have Pervs. Uh, we, we, need a, we need a better name than Pervs. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it for now. And uh, Disa Revway is also on the bench as well. Uh, so let's get straight into that now. Our first game of the season is against Gateshead and it will give us a real kind of eye of where we are. One little glance into the future of how we're going to be this season is we've already played a load of pre-season games. And if you look here, you will see we've beaten some pretty formidable opponents or at least been in the game against certain people. Obviously, we played our affiliate and lost 2-1 to Salford. We then played Sheffield Wednesday who played a decent team, like I recognised their players, and we beat them 3-1. Okay, so, you know, um, what league are they in now? What league is Sheffield Wednesday in? They're in League 1 still. We beat a League 1 team 3-1, sure. Newmarket, we beat 2-0, fairly average performance. We absolutely dominated them and only scored two goals. Uh, then we played Nottingham Forest, 2-1 again, close game. Nottingham Forest, of course, are in the championship. We then played rugby and beat rugby. Again, a lot of goals, uh, a lot of shots and things like that for us. Uh, we then played Derby and drew 1-1 with their first team. This looked very much like their first team. We had a, th a attendance of 3,945 that game, which is a huge attendance for the bakery and i think derby are in the championship they are indeed uh we then played stanford and one two one again very simple game we then battered championship portsmouth 4-1 they're in the championship they finished 10th last season in fact their league has already started because they're in second so they must have won their first game we battered them and like these are this was their full strength first team if we view the match we can look at their team and John Marquis, he starts for us. Uh, Rupp and Leitner are new signings. Beningami's a new signing. Uh, Naylor. I'm, I don't know who Segrist is. Is he a good goalkeeper? He looks like a very... Jesus, he's a very good goalkeeper. There's some very impressive players in that Portsmouth team. But yeah, pretty much their first team. And we absolutely destroyed them. In shots, in, in XG. We didn't beat them on possession, but that doesn't really matter. So yeah, we've had an indicator that we actually might be a pretty good team this season. So maybe, who knows, back-to-back -back promotion? Maybe? Who knows? The board want us to finish in the playoffs. That's what we're going to try and do. So let's get into this first game. So we are at the Gateshead International Stadium for the first game of the season. And an ambitious name for a team in the sixth league, uh, sixth tier of English football. But we will allow it. All over to you. Have a good one. And hopefully we can kick this season off. With a bang. It's a new season. We've got a corner. Waters whips the ball in towards the near post. A Yinsan is there and it's 1-0 already. Four minutes into the season. Joshua Yinsan gets his first goal. You love to see a big fist pump from him and a big fist bump from me. 
Wonderful cross in from Waters. A Yin San. It's the old boys. The old guard are continuing their performance from last season. And we're already off to a flyer in the Vanarama in the Vanarama National League North. Throw in to Gateshead then. Water dinks the ball in. Great ball in. That's Bailey. What a save. Good save from Hemming, the new goalkeeper. Hopefully he can be just as good as Langley was last season. He was very good. Greenfield with the corner. Whipped in towards the near post. Forbes is there. Good catch from Hemming. I don't like how he defended that corner, really. 15 minutes in and Greggs have a throw in. Good throw from Jarvis. Here's Moore. Jarvis picks the ball up after Moore's cross was blocked. Great ball in. Demba. Damba is there. Omar Damba. Wonderful goal. On the volley. I said Demba. I meant Damba. I was thinking of Demba Bar. I know. I know. It's Damba. Damba with a great finish. Jarvis into Moore. Moore goes for the really early cross here. It deflects back to Jarvis. And Jarvis gets his first assist of the season with a fantastic ball in. Damba is there. It's 2-0 to Greggs in the first game of the season. Half time then, and it is 2-0. Very decent half from Greggs. Gateshead have definitely been in the game, though. Their XG suggests that they are not far off us. It's only when we went 2-0 up did we really go ahead of them on XG. They've had four shots, three on target. They've looked okay, and their possession has been well in their favour. We'll have to work that out across the season. We're going to look at the substitutes now. There's a couple of players that might need to be substituted for fitness reasons. Kyle Jamieson is one of those, as is Bradbury and McGowan. I'm going to substitute McGowan off and bring on Pervs and see if he can do something to... I, I was going to make a pun there. I'm not going to. I'm going to resist the urge to make a pun for the name Pervs and uh, we will continue in to the second half. Throw in to Gateshead. Walker throws it in to Thomas. Walker gets the ball back and rolls it back to Williamson and Damba's intercepted the ball and he looks like he might be a really key player for us this season. Damba goes through. Good save from Montgomery. And it's going to go out for a corner. And can Greggs do something from this corner? Going to be whipped in yet again from Waters. A Yinsan is there waiting. It's gone towards him, headed away. And that's going to be the end of the highlight. Right, next sub is going to be our new striker, Di Sarevwe. He's going to come on for Josh Yinsan, who's played very well. And I think it's about time as well we bring off Lou Bradbury as well, who is not fit enough to finish the rest of this game. Bale is going to come on instead. I'm going to swap Bale and McCann around a little bit there to try and shore up that midfield. Hopefully we can do that. Greg Moore's had a 6.4. I'd have liked to have bring him off, but he is fitter than most of the rest of the team. So we're not going to. So those are the rest of our changes for the rest of this game. Free kick in their own half. Thompson, uh, Thomas picks the ball up. Hunter... Allen now. Allen through to Thomas on the right-hand side for Gateshead. Can they get past their man? Waters does a good tackle, but it's ended up failing. Can he get back into it? He tries to foul him again. It's a really good ball in. Headed on. Really good parry save. And Disarevway can come away with the ball now. He's over the halfway line. He's not a quick player. Can he find a pass here? He can't, but he does win a throw, and we're all right with that. Throw in again to Gateshead. They are pushing for a goal now. Fowler loses out to Jarvis, but Jarvis loses the ball again. Here's Greenfield into the penalty area, but Moore clears away. And then so does Jarvis, only as far as Jones, who punts the ball back over the top. Flicked on really well. Bailey is there. What a tackle. Who was that? That was an unbelievable tackle. Ball came over the top. Dinked on. Flicked on brilliantly. And that looks like it's going to be a penalty. But Jameson has come in and put in an absolute wonder tackle to win the ball back there. And it's cleared away. That's well played there. Into the final six minutes or so as we tick into the 90s. We're fine with a 2-0 victory. Clean sheet and goals on debuts. Full time. Greg's 2 Gateshead nil. And we actually really kicked our game on in the second half. Although we didn't really create that many chances that were visible for highlights. According to the game, we really dominated them on shots and XG after that second half. I, to be honest, most of the highlights looked like they were Gateshead's way, in my opinion. But, you know, we played pretty well. Yin San got his goal. Damba got his goal. Striker goals. Always good to see AFC Greggs now in second, joint with Gloucester and Geisley. Uh, I would expect a team like Geisley probably to be pushing for promotion this year. Same with someone like FC United, uh, maybe Boston. We'll, we'll see who is in and around the promotion places by the end of the season. That is going to be it for this episode. And I hope you've really enjoyed our summer, what we've done. If there are any more transfers, I'll bring them to you at the end, at the start of next episode. The start of next episode will probably be just after the transfer window is closed. So it'll be early September. Um, hopefully we've established ourselves 
in the league and got a couple more wins, that would be fantastic. We shall see. But if you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and, of course, a subscription if you could. Check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash the underscore steak underscore bake. And also Twitter and Instagram are the same with an at in front. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next episode. See you later and remember, be kind to one another. See you later.